What's up, world? Welcome back to the Narrative Club. On today's episode, we'll have Darren Brown here discussing his new up-and-coming movie, Users. A 25-year-old woman was found dead today at the Suburban Motel around 5 a.m. The police say this is the second killing this year of a young prostitute found with a lipstick kiss on her How are you? I've been all right. Oh, okay. Cindy, this is my wife, Mariah. Nice to meet you. There's one thing I will not tolerate from you or anyone else is making me look like a fool. Um, what exactly are we are we meeting about? Your fantasy. You ever wish you could just make people go away? I want to be loved the way it looks like someone loves you. You look put together. You look happy. Everything's not always what it seems. The number you have dialed has been changed. The new number is... Do you trust me? Of course. Thanks for coming out and talking with us today about your new up and coming project you have. The users. Yes, yes. Thank you for having me here on the Narrative Club. Um, yeah, um, I have a new film out, The Users which will be showing at Bel Air Theater uh, February 29th. And then we will also be showing it again uh, March the 28th at the theater as well for those who may have missed the red carpet premiere. So come on down, support good Detroit filmmaking, uh, good filmmaking in general, and I uh, hope to see you there. So. And you say it'll be premiering next Saturday? At next the Saturday on uh, February the 29th. We get an extra day. Uh, extra day to create black excellence so i'm excited about that so if you ain't well you already just said we don't have any more tickets but he does have a second oh, encore yeah. showing for those who missed this coming up we will have a trailer showing at the beginning of this show to let you know all about it, a little sneak peek to get you going yeah. to let you know all about the users and make sure y'all grab y'all tickets when they do come back out Exactly. And those that had any tickets, make sure you're there on time. You show yourself on time. Definitely be, definitely be there on time. I know I get a lot of support. A lot of people. I want you to come down and see it. I'm excited about this film. It's a film that I uh, actually directed, um, uh, shot, wrote, uh, produced. So uh, you know, of course, with a with a, a handful of uh, some of my favorite people in film. Um, so come on down and check it out. It really speaks to. You know, filmmaking, where I'm at, the different types of films that I want to create, and different stories I want to tell. Okay, well, give us a little feedback on who is Darren Brown and how did Darren Brown become this great filmmaker? No, oh, yeah. Um, so I started out just kind of writing. Uh, I initially uh, wrote a film and uh, I wanted to get it produced, and it's just hard, you know, trying to get somebody to believe in what you wrote, and you know, ain't nobody going. I mean, you wrote it, so you feel like it's the greatest. Yes. You know, it's your story. You know, you lived through it, and you feel like, oh, somebody, oh, it was crazy when I was living it, and somebody would be like, well, you know, that's a that's a that's a regular Monday for me. So, <laughs> <laughs> so for me to uh, tell people, hey, but sometimes when those regular Mondays get on film, they're like somebody's live a Saturday. So mm -hmm. it's just kind of like, yo, I wanted to show people, uh, you know, um, me as a young writer and what I wrote about. And, the subject that I wrote about was love. Um, I've always been an uh, advocate of people just loving on each other, caring for each other. And, you know, what is love with a little bit of drama? You know what I mean? So 
it's, it's, dra it's a dramatic love piece that I wrote. Um, and again, you know, I choose to write about love because it's kind of like, yo, know, that's just kind of the catalyst of uh, people's emotions. Everything starts with love, from fear to empathy, sympathy to all types of things. So I think it's one of those across the board uh, genres that everybody will look at and appreciate. So uh, that's a little bit about how I started. Um, you know, I wrote that film and actually uh, produced it and uh, Rocky Black was an actor. They now uh, are very uh, great established filmmakers here in the film community, uh, Blacksmith Enterprises. So, you know, I was happy to actually uh, share my first project with them. Okay, because everything does start with love and it actually ends with love. Yeah, that's right. The, <laughs> the progression and recession of love. Yes. So you we say you've been in the film industry for how long now? Uh, I would say um, probably about strong probably a good 17 years maybe strong Ooh. strong you know i mean give it take a few years where you know you kind of felt like let me let me set this aside let me set this aside so i get my family together you know yeah. um every artist goes through it i believe you know sometimes uh becoming an artist like you can you can grind and grind and grind so hard that you just care more about the art than you do yourself so sometimes you have to take a step back. Take a step back and take care of family. Take care of yourself. Yep. Back, yeah. yep, yep, yep. That's very, very important. Take care of your peace. Yeah. It's a little hectic. And sometimes, you know, people, we do this with the hopes that, you know, we can create a sustainable lifestyle or, you know, a sustainable life with uh, what we get from it. But sometimes that money gets in the way. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes that money can change us. So, you know, I've always been a, a fan of, an advocate of, uh, mental mental uh, stability and balance in my life when it comes to this. I don't want uh, going into it uh, just making film after film after film after film and then my kids grow up and be like, yo, you wasn't there. Yeah, you wasn't there. You was too busy trying to entertain everybody else. So yeah. I believe it's very important that you have a balanced lifestyle with the film and you don't want to, you don't want, First of all, you don't want to be resentful of film, and you don't want your children and your family to be resentful of film either. Yeah. So, you know, I that's believe true. that's, yeah, that's very important. So how would you say the filming culture in Detroit has changed from when you first started 17 years ago to now? Now, I mean, to be honest. That brought you to your actual production from then yeah. to now. So um, the, the, the culture here, I don't necessarily think it has changed. It just has grown exponentially. Uh, since it's more it's now it's more yeah. views out here than it was it's more movies uh uh it's more people involved it's more interest the only thing that we're missing and we need is more money <laughs> so <laughs> building building the foundation of film we've done that we we're proven we're proven that we can make entertaining content yes by by, by all means i mean we're number one on platforms uh and we're, we've proven not only that we can make entertaining content, but we can make different types of entertaining content, uh, you know, with stories that we've, we've had. We've had everything from urban dramas to love stories to comedies to horror films to name it. We, we have it. Uh, Faith-based films, name it and we have it. And I think uh, our evolution is just beginning. We're still, we're still infants. Uh, we're still crawling. So hopefully, you know, somebody will come and say, hey, we see what you guys are doing. We want to create, we want to help you create the infrastructure financially for you to continue to tell these stories that people are so interested in. That'd be great, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Detroit so, needs the money. We got the talent. We just need the money. Definitely. I mean, we're asking, and we're not asking for one person to come in and do it. We're actually asking for support from state, mm -hmm. city, you know what I'm saying? Allow us to uh, give us elbow room to do what we want to do. Uh, with award shows, with things that move the culture, you know what I'm saying? Uh, one of the award shows that um, I found it was the Detroit Filmmaker Award. Yeah, I was it's, just about yeah, to get to yeah, 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 the yeah. award show. I know last, first, you had the um, first one was last, last year, correct? Mm -hmm. And um, and this year you have another one. Yeah. When is this one this year? Uh, this one this year is going to be uh, June the 14th, location to be announced. Um, and I think that's just one of those things where not only... Do I want the film to be seen, but I want the film to continue to live on. I don't want us to do a premiere, and after the premiere, we just don't know what to do our film anymore. You know what I mean? Like, I want people to be able to still go back and watch it again. 
and uh, hold it in high regards like you do your other famous, your other favorite famous uh, people films that you, yes. you know, that you see your famous people in. Because uh, within our own right, we are putting in the same amount of work, the same amount of our time, um, energy, same amount of energy uh, to away from your families. Yeah. Them. To get con- to, great enter- content to content. entertain, you know what I'm saying? To to bring smiles, laughter, emotion, uh, in somebody else's life. Yes. To motivate. To uh, and it's not uh, it's not easy as most no, people think. It's, it's not, not at it's all. Not, it's, it's not, not a walk in the park. Yeah. It, it, it like you say, it comes where you need to have those breaks every yeah. now and then. Yeah. You yeah. need to come back strong. Yeah. So. Um, tell us about you. How did you come up with this actual story? So it's funny uh, because I've been on a few shows and people say, hey, uh, how did you come up with the music? I don't even remember. <laughs> I promise you. Like, I remember. So was it a movie that you had written in your vault already? You just like, yes, that's exactly what it was. It was one that I've written, that I've tweaked, that I sent out to a few friends to read. Uh, got some coverage from James, uh, a partner of mine, James McRae. Uh, um, okay, I'm sorry. And um, he wrote it, sent it back to me with coverage. I read it, said, "Come on, let's shoot it." And that's what it just was. It was like, "Hey, we need to shoot a film that doesn't cost a ton of money, uh, that still has a powerful message, that's still entertaining." Uh, what you got in the vault, Darren? I was like, well, "I got this. Let's do it." And everybody was like, "Cool, we're going to do it." So it was one of those films where it was like, it was a. It was, it was intriguing. It wasn't, you know what I'm saying, just like a Tyler Perry acrimony. Like, I haven't seen the film, but I, from the uh, trailer, yeah, 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 from the trailers, it just seemed like something that's that spoke to people, you know, in whatever way, whether you loved it, whether you hated it, it still spoke to you, you know what I mean? You still got the picture. Yeah, exactly. So it was something that, you know, and with me stepping away from film for a second, I wanted to do something that uh, I can be very... Um, intentional with that I can create a style you know because sometimes when you do certain films I mean people expect you to do things a certain way so with this film I created Switch the, it up a little yeah bit. yeah yeah so with this film my crew I created I took my time with it number one I created a storyline from the storyline I took that whole movie and I gave it to my composer who was Alton James and he made the he's uh he made all original score for it but the score itself is a character in the movie. So we took a lot of things from Alfred Hitchcock movies, um, you know, like the credits is a, a homage to Saul Bass, who does a lot of uh, those typography credits or, you know, animation credits. Um, so you see, and and the way the dialogue is done is it drops tidbits. So it's not just a, a plain, I mean, you know, not just a straight through run movie. Like you really gotta. You really had to go and pay attention. Pay attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen to how they speak with one another. Listen to how they talk to each other. Can you know uh, the words that they use? And um, I think it's it's called the users for a reason because everybody in the film is using each other for a particular reason. So that's okay. So that's as I, I watch the trailer, I'm like, okay, what's going on? Like. Yeah. It's who, and that's, who, who's sleeping with who in the movie. And that's exactly like when we, when I came here and I walked in and you said, hey, I don't know who wants who, what's going on with yeah. who. And she just look, it looked like she, she curious. Yeah. He looked like he could be up to no good. And yeah. the girl looked like, I got information that you may need. And then I'm torn in between, like, well, is she going to try to sleep and with I'm, her? And, or is they going to, like, is it going to be... She catch him doing this, or do she really want a woman? It's like put me in the mind of a Pandora box. You don't know what that's you're gonna exactly, open up. And that's the whole thing. Like uh, when I made the film, I wanted to take you guys on a particular journey. How they feel. I want you guys to without without losing the um, without losing the sense that the film is supposed to be made. You know what I'm saying? So when I did it, I wanted you to look at things and like that's pretty confusing. Uh, I don't know how I feel. Uh, okay, uh, you know what I'm saying? Even though he's cheating. Uh, is he? Is it really bad? Because look at but the it's situation. Not going to be no part two. You know what I'm saying? No. Uh, well, you know what? Uh, this is a film. You open it up for it. <laughs> this is a film that it's not. It's not about a part two of characters. It's more so would be, if anything, a part two of circumstances. You know what I mean? I mean the outcome. Yeah. Yeah. The outcome yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, this, this, this can, this can definitely be a film that circumstances apply to a different couple. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Uh, and the way that it is. Because like, they handled it this way, but somebody else... Exactly. Or, 
it may be on the other other side of things. You know what I'm saying? So once you look at it, like I said, I mean, I think for the most part, I took a psychological approach to. I made this film for the audience reaction. Okay. I wanted to see, so I mean, I rarely. You want to see up. basically. Wow, um, they scenario that they may have. Got. I want to see people. I want to see people kind of squirming their seats with this one, like. Like, oh, I want to see people's emotions. Like, don't do that. Oh, my goodness. Like, this is one of those films where... Like, girl, don't you go on that devil. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, or girl, don't you do it to that guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, or yeah, the, everybody in the movie is shady. This is crazy because, you know, um, like well, that's I said, what everybody I, has... Because like, everybody thinks they have ulterior motive. You don't all know of them. what it is. All of them. So I'm very. And that's what the users come yeah. in. It. Yeah, that's what the users. A lot of people say, oh, so y'all just say it's the users. Um, because you know what it remind me of? Not on set thinking. Hmm? Was it nine and a half weeks? No, so nine and a half weeks. Well, nine and a half weeks was one of those films where it really was. It was. It was a central sexy film. Um, but another film that you may uh, remember, Richard Gere, uh, is uh, I think Infidelity was it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, when his wife stepped out on him and then they killed the man. Yeah. And, you know, and then they fell back in love kind of behind it. Or they didn't even fall back in love. They just didn't know because they were married. So that, that marriage was stronger than the infidelity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, see, when people say that, I can get like, because I'm looking at, I'm sitting here thinking of the, um, when I look at overall film, mm-hmm. and we going on based on film, mm-hmm. I look at the light and color mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. and all that. Mm-hmm. And when you just, the two movies I just named, your film has actual lightning and color. I'm looking like, okay, so it's going to take me into this. We're not going to know what the hell's going on. Baby. Right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, and even... Because and, and yeah. most people be scared to do sex scenes. Oh, so that's funny that you say that because... Uh, Only in the independent world. Some people do it. Everybody you, can't do a sex scene. Let so. me tell you something. It's funny that you said that because... um, So, we do we did all the sex scenes. I think, and... and Intentionally, we wanted to do the sex scenes pretty early in the film because we wanted that initial passion and chemistry to happen. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, one of my actors, she called and she said, hey, and, you know, I got to be mindful because, uh, you know, actors actors have a way of, like, allowing the director to just be that, those, uh, that violinist, you know what I'm saying, and play those strings. And I think that's a great actor, and our actors got lost in the characters, which I love. I don't want you to act like the character. I want you to be the character. So after that, it's like, yo, like I, I appreciate my actors for being so vulnerable for me, for allowing me to uh, direct them in ways that, hey, I didn't even think that I would do I'm that here do I'm it. here. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So even when, when I first uh, started casting for it, people were like, uh, no, I'm okay, read it. I don't like the fact that they're doing this. I'm not really into that, this, that, and the other. And one of the things that I didn't want to explain, and I could explain, but I thought if you don't, if you think these words on a paper is going to uh, be your deterrent as to how you're going to feel about doing a role, then I don't want I don't want us to work together. I want you to be read it, get excited about it, be free about it. You know what I'm saying? Know that... And the way that I was, the way that I was shooting it, was uh, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a raunchy thing. Like I'm mm-hmm. showing it to people, and people say, "No, this is put together very well." And it's hard to get those, it's hard to get those uh, sexual uh, uh, scenes in independent film to look like not raunchy, not pornoish. <laughs> You know what I mean. Yeah. So uh, when I did it, it was like, "Yo, we really have to, we really have to turn this up." And I'm telling you, the chemistry, the everything was just spot on for me. And that comes along with good. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't look, it doesn't look awkward. Like they take it there. It has to look good, good acting because it's yeah. like it has to for it not to come as punish. Yeah. And it's like when you usually have a sex scene, and it's like people don't understand that when you have. Actors, and that this is what you want to do in your field, and when they're like, Oh, well, I don't really want to do this or close this, oh, because my dad's a pastor, his dad, my sister. When you go into a character, girl, tell you that daddy, that ain't you. Let me tell you, that's somebody else. The reservation, the reservations just wasn't there. I mean, I, I, I Deborah Chenault, I'm pretty sure you know that. Uh, Deborah Chenault Green, um, she plays, um, she plays, uh, Miss Klein in this film. Deborah Chenault Green, sweetest lady that you ever want to meet. Well, we're talking about a woman that 
is now struggling, drug addict, fallen star, and she turned this role out. We talking about, and she said, Darren, I say, I say, uh, Deb, she said, Darren, I'm an actress. This is what I do. I don't, if these people don't understand that this is what I do, then I don't know what to tell them. Yeah. So she was in this film just turning it completely out. And these are roles that, I like these roles because it pushes people to, you know, uh, it pushes people outside of their box. Yeah, it pushes execute. people outside their box. Like, nobody, nobody here, I'm not asking you to just know the words. I'm asking you to be the words. You know what I mean? And that's I, what, when I sit down and you have an actor or actress and mm-hmm. they tell me about a role they get, I always ask them, so how did you prepare for this role? Right. Because right. when you have to prepare for a role, you have to become yeah, that person. Definitely, definitely. So you really want to actually build a character yeah. around that person. But yeah, and, and I like I said, I appreciate them being so receptive to my direction as well. Yeah. So, I mean, that was just... You got to be a great leader to lead. Yeah. So you had to that be was just great. But right. again, like I tell everybody, I like working with actors. I love working with, you know, if I tell you to turn it up, you turn it up just enough. I like for you to change my mind about how I envisioned it at first. See, but you love the craft. Seventeen years in, you got to. Yeah, play. yeah, yeah. You got to be. You got to be. Uh, you know, um, nurturing with your actors, and you got to understand some. Like some compromise is good. Some compromise brings more out of the character. Like you know, and people have different styles. But for me, I like to be pleasantly surprised when I'm on my own set. Like I like. Oh, to, you didn't like. You like to sit there like oh. Oh, I didn't know she was gonna bring that up. Yeah, I didn't. That, yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. best thing yeah. about being on a set is when you get the goosebumps. I love being uncomfortable on my set, and when I say uncomfortable, it was times where uh, Jay she had to do a scene and she had to cry, and it was like the after the scene, I'm not gonna talk to you for about ten minutes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because it was like, whoa, what is going on? Yeah. Like, and then bring it all back. And it's just like, all Come right, back to the yeah, 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 all right, let's go we're to ready. The next scene. Like, yeah, like, like how, happened, how can we get out of that yeah. emotional state we were just in? Yeah, it happened so many times on the set that I was excited every time. Like, oh man, like, make, so me, you're make me uncomfortable. So you're utterly excited for Saturday to come in. I, you know ready what? I'm ready to because, be to be honest, yeah, because while everyone's watching the movie, I'm be watching the audience. So the audience will be my movie. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like I want to see. Get the expression. I, I have to see it because I mean I think as a, I think as a as a director uh, that's able to make films, I want to see the reaction, audience reaction. Because at some particular point in time, I don't necessarily like. I make movies. I make movies for me. I love making movies. But at the end of the day, we can say, "Oh, we do it because it's for us. We want to do it. It's for our sanity, or whatever the case may be." But. Um, we tend to want to see how our films move an audience. And once you know, and once you get it, that you can do this and move an audience and, you know, and it becomes good, a good movie and you can evoke, you, you know, evoke emotion out of individuals, then you become a better writer. Yeah. Because yeah. I say reviews, yeah. feedback is yeah. always, it's yeah. always, yeah. We're not always. Just, we're not just writing. What yeah, we did, we did, a filmmaker yeah. is just not making a film for you. Just come and look and not tell us about it. Yeah, we yeah, want yeah. It, We want feedback. You know, you want the yeah. feedback on it. If you see, if y'all go see the users, please hit them yeah. up to let them know. Like, hey, yeah. hey, and not everybody is good at watching the movie and at the end expressing how whatever. But in the moment, yeah, you like can pull all. Yeah, yeah, you can pull all that. Yeah, you can pull all that out. You can pull all that out. Because I'm because so I have my mind. I want to. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm looking like, cause if I go into it thinking it's gonna be this, and then I'm sitting there and you blow me, I'm looking like, mm-hmm. where the hell that come from? So and yeah, but again, the uh, the uh, the trailers can be the way of short too, cause you're going to expect the one thing from the trailers being so vague. Mm-hmm. And the trailer, come out and cause like, what a trailer does is it captures it's such your expectations. Too. So you can come see it. Yeah. We want you to come in here with every theory you got in your head. Yeah. So yeah. it's like that, I, want you, I want to help you sort it out. <laughs> I want to help you sort it out. So I hope I'm helping. I hope I'm help you sort it out. Uh, at the end of everything, because it's just kind of like I want to see. I want to see what's going on. I want to see if you caught it. I want to see the confusion. I want to see the. Huh, that's what happened. Like that's crazy. Like I want to see all that in an hour and a half of movie. And like I said, I mean, I can walk away. And I mean, content may not be for everybody, but. If I can get something to grow on, then I know mm-hmm. I've made and that's a good movie for me. Yeah, you know what that's I mean? what it's about. It's, it's growing. Because yeah. even after 17 years in the industry, you already, I yeah. know you had some bumps. Yeah, of course. Some lumps. Of course. 
probably some drag out, knockdown mm -hmm. stuff yeah. that make you want to just throw in the towel. Definitely. And, but I also know you had a lot of growth, mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. lot of more hunger in the game, mm -hmm. a different direction to go with it. Mm -hmm. So it was like, and you still at the up team film, you mm -hmm. still like, okay, I can either, I can take whatever you have bad, I can uh -huh. take whatever you have good, and come with my next project and, 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 and still right. make you come back to see that. That's what Because you want to see if I grew from it. Right. So you become, you after a while, you just become that artist that really knows the rules but you're able to bend the rules and you're able to do certain things that make people be like oh i see where you're going with it now i'm gonna be alone for this ride with him right mm -hmm. i can't wait to see the next one and that's the whole yeah. thing i mean a person like i said my one of my favorite directors made the best film that i've ever seen and the worst film that i've ever seen so just imagine somebody who you hold in the highest of regards when it comes to your craft that you love that can do no wrong make one of the worst films that you've ever seen and you just got finished watching one of the best films that you've ever seen. And it's confusing. So you understand the inner workings of what uh, what it is to be an artist. And every Beyonce song is not a hit. <laughs> every Prince song is I not a hit. I for saying that. Because he is my fave. Yeah. But, but everyone is not a hit. Yeah, everyone, so everyone is not, not your favorite. It's not. And that's fine. It's just that we take a little bit longer to put our hits out. You know what I mean? Like, we take a little... And then we have to entertain for an hour and a half and make mm -hmm. sure that hour and a half is a hit. We don't have four minutes to say, oh, okay, that didn't work out. Crumble it up, throw it's it away, let me make another one real quick. Because you got to have the content to put out in order to get the feedback that you need to go on. So, it can be disheartening when you when you spent two years of your life making something and then you put it out there and don't nobody like it. <laughs> you know how tough that can be for a person? Like, but how would you handle it, though? Just go back to the drawing board? No, because uh, no, 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 no. That that right there, that right there, can be just as good as it can be bad. bad. How I would handle it? I mean, I did things where a person been like, "Oh, this is trash." Well, number one, tell me why, why it's, trash. it's trash. Because it is okay. Well, that's not, no, that's not. I'm not taking anything. that. You know what I'm saying? I'm so tell, tell me, that. yeah, tell me what it is because it's not the vision that you wanted, or and this is more so clients. It's not the vision that you wanted, or what did I do wrong? Okay, well, you did this, then the other. Okay, cool. I'm going to correct it. So my next person that I'm talking to, I'm going to make sure to involve them in everything before I even present them with a finished product. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So now I've learned from this. I've learned from taking a finished product to a person and he's just telling me it's trash and he probably don't know how to express what kind of trash it is to me saying, I'm not going to go that far the next time. I'm going to make sure before I even start doing this to talk to the client so he can say, I don't like it as opposed to it's trash. Because once you get somebody something complete, they have a full, they have full uh, range. Yeah, or a full opinion on why your this budget. is trash. And whereas, made you discard of your hard work. Yeah, exactly. Whereas if you halfway in the middle of it and they say, I don't like it, then you can back up and say, well, wait, I'm not finished. Tell me what you don't like about it so I can correct it. And then now when we get to the end and they say, hey, it's trash, you can say, hey, Bro, you was here from the very beginning. So if it's trash, you got to take some responsibility for it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you have to because I, 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 I communicated with you. I asked you what didn't you like when we first started, and then you told me to proceed. I didn't take it upon myself to do everything. So that's a valuable lesson that I learned with doing so. And that's know. a great lesson. That's yeah, a, a yeah. great lesson for everyone to learn. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's just about, you know, coming out, watching it. Give, like leave it. me your feedback. Let me know if it was good. Mm -hmm. Let me know how you liked it. Hey, you can even tell me what you wanted on the next one. That's what I'm saying. Some people are minimalists and some people want the, the, the Victorian, uh, you know, look on everything. And you can't have it. And Independent it, is just what it is. I mean, if you tell me in the beginning, I'll give it to you. But, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's still, it's still in business. Independent is just what it is. Yeah. yeah. So, um, that's all great feedback for you. Be able to come in mm -hmm. and enjoy users and get what they can get out of it. Right. Exactly. I thank you so much for coming to sit oh, down thank and you for talk. having me. Even though you always welcome at the very oh, Thank you. You're welcome to come back and talk about the uh, film fest that you got coming up. Yes, yes, yes. And yes. the award show. We definitely, definitely. Say seven to the red carpet, fellas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Red definitely. carpet for the film. Yeah. It's going to be huge, so. Huge film fest. Yeah. Well, thank you for sitting down and talking and chatting thank up with the Narrative man. Club. Make sure y'all catch the users when it come back March, because we already sold out the first showing next week. And we'll be 
here waiting for the extra feedback to see what everybody thinks, especially me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm anticipating it. So, <laughs> especially me. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you.